Okay. Uh, let me. Anything to help grow your Twitch channel, man. No, I don't need that. Sir. Yeah, good to roll, sir. Welcome back, players, to Out of the Abyss. Where we last left off, you had just finally managed to make your way out of the prison cell uh, due to a timely intervention by a horde of demons. Who knew? Thankfully, you are also given a means to escape thanks to one of the disgraced guards. So, you had just made your way past a group of drow guards that were left back to kind of keep an eye on the place, and you're proceeding forward. Uh, as you can see right now, most of the guard, uh, most of the prison area has been emptied. Um, you're right nearby Redthor, you would remember that this is nearby, there's a little alcove passageway that leads up to the temple. Uh, and at least you would remember that you're heading towards the way where you went to to go to the kitchen. Slash the kitchen area. Slash meat hall. You are getting closer to the main living area for the prison right now. Most of the party members are not really combat ready, so they haven't provided you much assistance, but a couple of them have been more forthcoming, especially the drow and uh, dwarven female that uh, helped you in your timely encounter. So, what do you do now? Uh, we picked up a hundred foot of silk rope from last I remember. Yes, you did. Uh, you're gonna share the map. Is it not shared? Uh, click on images, oh, click on new, and click on... Back in... Back over here. Uh, player map. Yeah, I thought I was sharing it. Just right click and share it again. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Okay, so... 
we're near the temple that mm -hmm. I had clean. So I uh, look at Bora and say, Hey, you want to go uh, steal some relics to sell there? They got some in there. Yeah, good way to get pull one over on them. Um, oh, uh, Tristan? Yes? He asked you a question. <laughs> I thought he was talking to Borak. Yep. Oh, uh, to Borak? Um. Because he's the one closest to me. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you were talking to Elise. <laughs> I'm not much for stealing, but if there's something you can find of value in there, we need to make it quick. And we don't know how long they'll be distracted with those demons. Uh, does my character hear this coming from Hexor and Borak? Are you making it silent, Red Thor? No, I'm just talking. You can probably hear it. You can probably hear it very easily. It's not like that loud. He's not shouting, but you can hear this conversation. I look over my head. If you guys are planning to steal from a temple, oh, just make sure it's not mine. Are you a worshiper of the Loth? I'm or, a worshiper. Of... Worship? I'm a worshiper of Helm. God of protection. Then I believe we're fine. Let's go get some money. Alright, uh, move your token up to the uh, the temple. Let me do a roll. Inside it or is it locked? Uh, you go ahead and put your hand against the door. It opens. <clears throat> and you're surrounded by 15 drow commanders. I mean, that would be funny. As you come into the temple, you see... That same drow female that you saw last time, she's in there uh, kind of trying to hide away from what's going on. And she looks from behind the, t the uh, statue at you. Like, how, how are you here? You're supposed to be locked up. I look out the door and yell, Hey, Seraph! Might want to come here. I got a present for you. I think uh, I get... Seraph walks in. I think I can feel Seraph's groaning from here. <laughs> he, he, he pushes his way through the door and he sees... Oh. Hello, girl. <laughs> Is this what you wanted me to see? Yes. I've, I uh, figured from the last time we were in here, you didn't like her. So, I bet you do whatever the frick you wanted to to her. If you want to kill her, go ahead. If not, well, that's your business. I'll, I'll have you both know that I am... I am not weak. I, I have powers at my command. I will put you hey, both down. You're in here hiding. Well, someone has to make sure the temple stays all right. Uh, I. Is, it was a fair, it was a fair assessment. All right. 
Seth just kind of looks over at you and looks over at her. So what did you want to? So what did you want to do in here? We're already making our way out. Did you just want me to see her? I have nothing against this girl. She's ignorant and pompous, but that is all. Okay. I'm just uh, pulling one over on these dumbasses and uh, taking what I can. If you want to grab some stuff, go ahead. I'm sure there's some uh, other temples that would glad to buy it from me. Buy some of this stuff from me. So, your... You scrounge through the, the temple room while Sareth gets the idea. He, he kind of holds, points his hand crossbow at uh, Asha, kind of keeping her kind of, you know, crossbow point. I need you to roll me a perception. I don't see him. Uh, you know you're. You managed to find. Is Borak with uh, them as well, or no? No, Borak didn't go up there. He just told them to make it quick. He's kind of more trying to like usher everybody else along so they can get the hell out of here. Uh, you see the spider statue of Loth, which she's a patron of spiders. You see there's four... Uh, there's some gems in the eyes of the statue. Do you want to try and take them out? Yes. Uh, do you have a dagger or something on you? Uh, yes, actually. All right. Um, I think a sleight of hand check would be fair because you're trying to do something dexterous with this to try and pry them out. So roll me a sleight of hand. Okay. You managed to get out... You get out four small gems, and but the larger ones are way more secure than you can possibly get. They're like clasped in, and you don't you don't feel you should be wasting too much time trying to get these gems out. Huh? You watch as Asha's like. Stop! What are you doing? Stay where you are, girl. This will be over with quick. Are you done, Red Thor? I look around and look. Yeah. I'm just gonna get the hell out of this prison. You live today, girl. Remember your cowardice. And Sareth walks out with you. Man, I'm getting some lag. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, there we go. Delete. There we go. All right. Uh, but yeah, you have those four... Call them... Spider Eye Gems. Yeah, four of them. You'll be able to appraise them later. They are worth five gold piece each. Not bad. Nope. 
At least the okay. continues on. I would assume yes. So, uh, where do you move to now? I'm just moving, continuing down the uh, path. Okay, move yourself. I am. I was probably trying to catch up. Okay, and move all the rest of your party along. So many NPCs! <laughs> it's a conga line! <laughs> Not only do they all have it. Okay. You can see, like, further around, uh, towards that bridge, there are more soldiers filtering their way through. They haven't noticed you that Six Legs are more focused on trying to get rid of these demons. Uh, there is the main hall to your left, perspective-wise, uh, from what you can see, and there is a, a door next to you there. But you can see what looks like the mechanics of some type of lift, it looks like. Over there. Towards my character's right? Yes, to your right. They're next to these two buildings, in between these two uh, buildings, they look like some type of housing of some kind. You're not mm -hmm. sure exactly what. I walk over to the lift and see where it goes. It heads down to the cavern floor. It's a little beyond your dark vision to see all the way down there, but it looks pretty clear. I mean, there's spider webs right near the cavern wall closest to you, but you could kind of put that together just because that's how they've been getting all the silk. spider silk. Yeah. I look over and call all uh, Sarah up to see if this is a way we need to go, or is there another way? You talk to who? Sarah. Since he, he walks over, well, that seems to be the best way, girl. The only other way out of this place is. Where the fighting is at most intense at. How far is the entrance if we take this route? Into this catacombs? There should be a passageway somewhere down there, last I believe. There's also... Stay out of the water. There's some things in there that... If left alone, it's fine. But... I wouldn't go in there and bother it if I were you. Duly noted. I smell an experienced pinata. <laughs> <laughs> God. Stool comes up and touches your leg. Is this the way home? I don't know yet. We have to find out first. Uh. Can I roll a perception to see how many people the lift will hold? Uh, go on ahead. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, you can guess about four people can make it easily. Borak checks your math. 
<laughs> it, it looks about four people, girl. That's exactly what I came up with, too. Is the lift uh, manually operated, or is, or is there a counter lift to it? It looks like there's a mechanism heading down further into the cave. You can't clearly see what's down there, though. All right. But there seems to be a bell in the cave in the uh, lift. In the, in the lift. All right. Uh, Elise looks at the group and asks, "Well, who's going down first? Well, uh, you know, I I don't feel I should. Hey, this is a uh, Jim Jarrett talking. He's like, I don't feel I should be the first one to go down. You know, just you know, just in case. But what if the demons come up here and or the drow? Yeah. How about you know you've got the weapons. What if there's stuff down there? You go ahead and go down. Oh, this goes. All right. All right. Who's joining me? Balgor lifts up his uh. Name Borak. Balgor. God, <laughs> Bor <laughs> God dang it! <laughs> oh, I missed my guy. Ah, uh, we figured out who he really is. <laughs> Bo Borak. Uh, Lifts up his weapon. I'm not one to shy away from a fight. We'll at least secure the landing for the rest of them. And I said, Well, I can't let you go and have fun without me. Is there anyone else you would like to take with you? Well, her one match, two melee. Elbeth or Sarath, you want to come along? There's one more spot. Uh. Oh, do you want me to pick between the two? Mm hmm. God. Roll the die. Right. Yep, that looks like what's gonna. Let High they... percentage, it'll be uh, Sarath. Low percentage, it'll be uh, Eldith. Alright. Sarath climbs in, he's like, what would you people be without me? Lost. That's where we would be. Mm. You're not wrong about that, Gale. So, you don't see any means to lower the the lift yourself but like i said the rope looks like it heads down for the lift and you said there's, there's a bell, bell. mm-hmm ella scrubs the bell and rings it you hear the bell ring and the lift starts going down it's well at least they keep it manned <laughs> <laughs> or something else drawing it down and not human or any se sentient creature or my or maybe uh, a sentient I was hoping it was magic <laughs> it might be a magical creature <laughs> you sentient managed to make your way down and as it reaches the ground Actually, let me take her out of combat. So she is no longer here. Uh, delete item. I'll put her back on there here in a second. Uh, let's see, where is it? I had the list of it. There we go. 
Wait, nope, I don't want that. Wait. There we go. Alright. As you make your way down, you suddenly see... Speeders! <laughs> we don't know yet. <clears throat> Those aren't them? combat tracker guys, mm -hmm. though. Oh, dang it. How do I add them to combat? Do I just drag them onto... No, not that. There we go. Snipe, snipe there. Where did you get them from? I got them from the encounters list. So drag them from the encounters list into the combat tracker. Just drag the encounter. Drag the dragon icon next to the encounter into the combat oh, tracker. Oh, okay. And there's one. And you'll have to place them then after that. Okay. So delete those yeah. tokens. Thank you very much. Sorry about that, viewers. I am still fairly new to this program. It'll take me a little bit to get used to it, but... Not like there's riding one. a bike. And then there's two. Just, okay. this one has six wheels. And they each turn independently of each other. <laughs> yep. They don't all... They don't all sit on the ground at the same time. Yep. <laughs> okay, and... You see... Two Quagoths manning a winch. As you... As the... The lift hits the bottom. They're manning a winch or a winch? A winch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a big difference between those two things. <laughs> the answer is yes. And with that, roll initiative. But wouldn't they see the draw, though? Hmm? Wouldn't they see the draw? Oh, yeah, they see him, and they care not. Yeah, oh, boy. This is gonna be fun. Uh, remind me again, how do you roll initiative for the mobs? Uh, on the combat tracker, down at the bottom... I don't have it open right now. There's one of the options or the menu or something. If you click on right click on it, it should bring up a menu oh. and you can have it roll, oh, yeah. roll roll initiative for NPCs. Thank you very much. Oh wow. Uh Zaref did very well. Okay, so Alright, we'll start this off. Uh well actually let's move them a little further back. Let's... Just to simulate that they weren't right up on you. Okay. Uh, it is Seraph's turn, and he just immediately pulls out his uh, hand crossbow and takes a shot at one of the Quagoths. Vermis! Huh? And it is next person's turn. Red Thor, what are you going to do? What any good warlock does. Why Eldritch Blast, of course. Okay. They hit. Okay, we'll roll your damage. Wait, All right. No. Wait, no, you rolled an attack twice. You need to drag the damage on him instead of the yeah. attack. Oh, okay. Here, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Although, wait. Oh? Yes. Huh? Uh, okay. Have to take the damage die on some of them. Yep. Yeah. I was clicking the wrong thing for the damage die. It must be storming at night. Okay, good hit, good hit. Uh, Borak, it is your turn. 
You still have Sanctuary active. Do I'm I? I'm just gonna allow it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Okay. So I'm just gonna allow last it. for. I think it lasts for like an hour. And it hasn't been mm. an hour since our last battle. I, don't think. I think it. No, Sanctuary doesn't last that long. But the thing I put on you does. Yes, mm. that's. We'll just say that you have it right now. I could take it off, but I'm not worried about it. Keep going with it. All right. Well, I don't have. I, don't, I can't really do much. Um, because I'm out of spells. I got cantrips though. Let's do mm -hmm. sacred flame. Yep. No, I can't. I can't do anything damaging. Well, mm. unless I want to lose my sanctuary. You can get rid of sanctuary. I'm gonna get rid of sanctuary because I can't do anything helpful at all. Because I don't have any spells left anyway, so. Okay. Uh, so it should go away when I do this. Uh, oh, I just deleted the effect. So the quagga failed. See, so he failed. That means he takes the damage. Mm hmm. Okay. Um. Now it's the Quagos. Mm hmm. Quagos comes up. Gonna roll to hit Elise for a hit. Uh, damn. This is gonna hurt. For four damage. Yeah. The second Quagoth. is going to snarl something at the first and he's going to start making his way probably to go get more drow that is not an ideal situation okay maybe we should have brought the quag off with us well, the winch is now free. There's no one on the winch. Uh, let me draw it real quick. There you go. All right. Alright. At least your turn. Yep. Basically, long sword against the thing's head. You hit? Good hit. Max damage, too. Mm hmm. New round. Sarath, who's uh now in melee with this thing, he is going to put fairy fire on the Quagoth, or attempt to anyway, and the Quagoth succeeds. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's Red Thor's turn. Um. Uh, 
Can I still see the Kragoth in front of Elise? Mm-hmm. Right there. I'm gonna say yes. Going to. Yeah, there is the thunderstorm there. Mm-hmm. That's probably why I'm getting a little lag. Test fireball. Um, <laughs> well, what I'm gonna do is play with something I haven't played with yet. I'm gonna cast poison spray. Okay, he fails. Okay. There's two damage. <laughs> he he watches the damage. poison hits him, and yeah, it doesn't affect him. Fuck. Yeah. So. Well, unless like unless you have anything else you want to try and do, I believe that ends your turn. Um. Unless you have a bonus action of some kind that you can cast. Uh, yeah. No, because uh, oh, I spell slot. Okay. Yeah, that's it. All right. Borak, it is your turn. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I can I should be able to move over here avoiding combat uh, mm -hmm. five, so I'm going to go over here I'm going to yell get off the lift and uh, from here since they can't get off the lift in this turn I'm going to cast sacred flame him again Mm -hmm. Another fail. Okay. Good hit. Uh, as you head over to the winch, you see the, the Quagoth saw you move over, and he kind of snarls and he turns his back to Elise and Sarath. And he moves over to try and stop you. Shouldn't we get... Roll an attack of opportunity, Elise, and I'm going to roll one for Sarath. Wouldn't that be an advantage, too? Mm. Since he's disengaging. He turns his back and he's disengaging. Yeah, and there was someone next to you, so, yeah. Well, you don't have pack tactics, but... Yeah, sure. I'm gonna say yeah. Go ahead. Roll it with advantage. But... Alright. I wouldn't get one either, since I can see him too. No, because he, he wasn't in your uh, occupied space. You're 10 feet from him. Yeah. Sorry, man. And then... Well, let's see. There he goes. It's one. I'll be right back. Yep. A hit. Yep. And damage. All right. Uh, he tries to. Uh, he's going to try and take a swing at you, Borak, for a hit. And 
and you had a concentration success. Okay. And the next one is going to run his way off, and he is gone. Probably did go get assistance. All right, it is now at least turn. As soon as she gets back. Did you move him or did he move himself? Hmm? Did you move him? No, oh, his mic's muted. And he missed. Okay. Top of initiative. It is Seraph's turn. He's going to take a shot with his crossbow. For a hit. And... Okay, I'm back. Hmm. And he's saved. Okay. All right, Red Thor, it is your turn. This thing is looking very battered. <laughs> so does Borak. <laughs> so did two of your party members. For a hit. And it is dying. He watches the bolt sears out of uh, Red Thor's hand and strikes the thing straight across the face. It collapses to the ground. Borax says, help me with this lift. We gotta get them down before help comes. Well, this helps. Okay, uh, Borak, roll a, and let me delete this. And I help as I can. Is there enough room for another, or is it just the two people? Uh, it's just the two people. So, Sarath is going to keep guard over by the, uh, the entranceway, and he just yells over, hurry up, we don't know how long it will be before they make it here. Hopefully those demons killed off a great many of their number. Uh, Borak, roll a strength check. Should I also roll trust strength as well? So is the also helping? Yes, you can roll your strength as well. Okay, that should be enough. Yes, that's more than enough. All right, um... You both successfully manage in your bloodied state to start moving the winch and it rises back to the top. You then watch as you hear the bell ringing and... The inner strength check, I'm guessing? Hmm? Inner strength? Uh, yes, roll another strength, please, both of you. Okay, good. Uh, that was athletics. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's strength okay, plus cool. four, because I don't have proficiency, so. Okay, cool. Alright, uh, so the winch comes uh, back down. And these four step off. And do you try and move the winch again to get the other four? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
All right, it goes back up, and I'm just going to say you've successfully mastered moving this winch, <laughs> and the other four come down. And with that, uh, Sareth says, Sareth uh, tells you all to move along. Hmm. We need to hurry. I see torchlights in the distance. They have pro that uh, Neanderthal probably alerted them to our position. We need to run now. Which direction? <clears throat> Well, obviously not that way. Head further up the cave line. There should be an exit way out there. Usually they try and send caravans up that way. Alright. Up we go! And you see an exit way. Further up along the cave line. And from there, you've successfully managed to escape from the drow prison. <laughs> yeah. That may or may not be a good thing. So. This map is no longer going to be needed. By the way, with those encounters that you have, that you were dragging in or whatever, mm -hmm. you can also drag those into the um, party sheet, and it will add them as experience. Okay. And then you can distribute. So... I believe that should work. Just drag the dragon no, head into the player sheet. Okay. Down where it says experience. Alright. Uh, I want that. I don't want combat tracker. I want the party sheet. Other. Ah, there we go, XP. Sorry about that. Take, uh, well, I guess it's up to you, but you could take Sarith out of the combat tracker before you do it. That way it's just the three of us, but it's up to you how you want to distribute it, whether just the party or whether you're going to give the NPCs. And also, for that matter, Borak, if he's really just an NPC. Uh, he's turning into a player. But yeah, no, he will. He will. I will split the party experiment so just amongst you two. Uh, let's see. Because <clears throat> as far what I would do with Borak, if he's gonna be, I mean, like I said, I I can't always say whether I'm gonna be here or not. So with yeah, Borak, he, what I would do is just say what level he's gonna be. Like if the party levels yeah. up, then he levels up. Sounds good to me. Okay, and then yeah. Yeah, or if you need combat. him to be higher level, he can be higher level too. There we go. Alright, so everybody's out of combat now. And how do I award XP? So on the bottom of the player, or I think it's in the middle, there's an arrow button. So if you've got the if you've got the encounters drug onto the experience panel, there should be an arrow that you can have it and it'll automatically award experience. Click and drop encounter links here. That's the little dragon. There heads. we go. Um, how do I award it? There should be a... to... Oh, Once... there it goes. There it goes. Yep. Um, there's one, and you should be level two out of this anyway. I really don't like doing this experience thing. I prefer just telling you when you level up. Uh... Oh, you well, if you don't want to do that, you can just tell us we leveled up. That's fine. Yeah, no, you're all level two now. All right. 
I just I didn't know if that I didn't know how you wanted to do it. I was just letting you know that there's an easy way to, to distribute um, experience. That's good to know, and I thank you for that. But uh, yeah, I just I prefer, I'm more of a verbal. Yeah, you've leveled up now. Um. So yeah. That way, the other question is: Is when we level up, do we still need to do a long rest to get our spells back, or is it kind of like uh, dinging in WoW? Or it's whatever? it's uh it's uh, think of Final Fantasy. <laughs> a tune plays in your head as uh, you've leveled up and you you heal, and everything else is good. You're going to be resting now anyway because you are now in the uh, the Underdark. You've managed to make you ran for a good couple hours. Uh, <laughs> getting away from the camp you've managed to set yourself a pace ahead of the uh of your pursuers um but yes you are now officially in the underdark and i need to place that are we rolling for hit points or taking the average you may roll for hit points can we choose to take the average? You can choose to take the average or roll, but you have to accept the roll if you do the roll. I just took the average for Borak. Okay, that's fine. Please <laughs> don't. And there you go. So you've successfully made your way out of your prison. At Velk, Velkenven, Velkenvelv. I hate the name for these drow shit. Uh, Uh, do y'all see a player map for the Underdark in your area by any chance? I just have the player, the prison we were in. Okay. Uh, if I share this with you, can you see everything? Yes. But what about now? You... Nope. nope. Can't see anything. Now you'd have to unmask it. Mask it? Is that what you did? Yep. There we there go. There you go. Okay. That's Can all the, the better the resolution they gave you. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah. I hate the re this is so bad resolution. Uh but yes, this is where you are now.
So you've managed to make your way out of the prison. You and the rest of the prisoners are sitting by the candlelight or by the fire. You were able to uh, start to make your rest and heal yourselves up. Uh, uh, were we able to find a stable or no? A stable? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You're in the Underdark, dude. Mm -hmm. There's nothing but caves, caves, more caves. Also stalagmites and stalactites. But there are no stables. Not that you can see here. Uh, it doesn't look like there was any stables at that prison for you to try and get a horse from, if that's what you were saying. Well, because of my background, I would have a horse. Uh, your horse got eaten or captured. Yeah. Lovely. So, uh... Most likely, anyway. Yeah, most you don't have a horse right now, dude. Poor horse. Mm, I as well take that out of my. <laughs> yeah, you you do not have a horse right now. Hunter <laughs> Dark, just find a lizard. Right. <laughs> so. You're, you and the rest of the prisoners are sitting down, and you're asking your, so, yeah, you're sitting around the fire, and uh, Jim Jar goes, well, that was, that was eventful, but um, I'm glad we're out of here. So, uh, anyone got any ideas about where we should go? Obviously, we can't go back. Well, none of us have a map of the Underdark, so... I don't know where to go, since I've mainly been on the surface. I'm not familiar with these pathways, but if we can find our way to some of the major cities, I could probably find... I'd be better at navigating my way. Hmm. Say, Borak, do you know of hmm. any? Do you know where the closest city is to where we were being kept prisoner? The city I can think of would probably be. I've heard that the uh, Menzo Barazan is not far from here. There's also Grax Gracklestug. And those are the only two places I can think of. Um Blightendum. Blightenstone is not too far away from there either, but I can't tell you which direction they are from here. I look at the draw. Do you know anything about this, these catacombs? My dear girl, I've been living here for the past 300 years. Of course I know my way to how to get anywhere in the Underdark. Good, because we're going to be relying on you a lot. But, uh... And then you see Stool walk up into the, the center. We can be safe at my place. My people would welcome us. I look at Stool and go, Stool, I hope you didn't share that with the drow. That would probably kill you. Well, as much as I hate the little thing, he does have a point. I can't go walking into any drow cities. I am wanted. Hmm. At least if we can get him to his place, we can be rid of him any time, any sooner rather than later. Stool, do you know, you know the way to your people's place? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh. 
and then finally you hear a weird croaking sound and it seems to be the Kotoa and he's like trying to motion to you all to talk and Stool's like he's saying his his people's place isn't far from here we we could go there and we could maybe at least get supplies well that's a start would you would you like me to translate for you they'll be very much thankful since I can't speak his language and you suddenly can immediately understand what Shusar is saying. So wait, the stool is literally... We have a universal translator with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll a null... Uh, roll just a flat intelligence. <laughs> you don't know. I don't know either. No. <laughs> Red Thor? Better. Red Thor vaguely puts it together that this thing can talk to your minds, so it can probably talk to others, so it is just acting like a universal translator and just translating what other people are saying for you. You notice that uh, Topsy and Turvy, now that you can actually speak to one another, well, everyone except for Borak. Borak can understand what pretty much most of the party members are saying because he also knows how to speak under common. Uh, Topsy and Turvy, I'm not going to do a voice for them. Sorry, I'm, I got way too many. Uh, <laughs> they say that they can get you to Blinkenstone. But they kind of don't want to go there. And I go, let me guess. You're wanted. They kind of look at each other and then kind of just, yeah, we are. But if we're not heading that way, just as a thank you to get you for helping us get out of there we're probably not going to stick around. Elise nods and bids them a farewell if they do go. Alright, they give you a nod and they uh, gather up some supplies that they managed to scrounge together and they head off into the dark. Jim Jar, Quella. Speaking of Blingdenstone, I'm not wanted there, and it's a fantastic city. Also, there's a way out of the Underdark there. Okay. But how many leagues is it from here? Or don't you know? Well, Blingdon Stone, there's two ways we can get there. This is Sarath, by the way. We can head the long way, which I do not advise. The long ways in the Underdark are not always the best. Our best bet would be to cross the Dark Lake. Then we can manage to get a ship from the Frogman's place. No, I'm a Kotoan priest. Frogman, as I said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can head to his little place wherever he was. And we can make our way across the Dark Lake. Uh, maybe if we can purchase some boats of some kind or trade. We can head over to... Man told Dareth, and from there it's only a couple of days' walk to Blingdenstone. All right. 
I look at the priest and go, so which way would we have to go to you get to your people's town? Um, it's not that far. We should, um, uh, um, uh, we could arrive there within three days, I believe, from here. Well, yeah, let's hope our let's hope our food can hold out that long. Yes, so I can spread my um, the wisdom of my pe to my people I have encountered in my travels. So, um. Yes. Prince Darendil is pretty much just going to follow you around. He has nowhere else to go. And you do plan on heading back to the surface at some time. Mm -hmm. So it seems, it seems like a good idea for me to stick around with you for at least to get us to the surface. And then, my lady, I can show you my glorious kingdom. Ah. Uh, stool kind of you hear and you feel a nudge in the back of your in your heads so are we not going to stool's home well we don't know where your home is so uh, Sarah kind of raises his hand i believe i know what he's speaking of there is the neverlight grove It's a pretty far travel, but it would get him home. All right. It takes us away from Blingdenstone. And it is far. I guess one thing at a time. So, what... What objective do y'all agree on going to first? Well, I'm going to let uh, Red and B run beside that one. I'm you'll. It's a Borax NPC. <clears throat> yeah, Borax just an NPC. He's following you. He has nothing better to do. That's between you and Red. Red Thor. If he's there. I am here. Okay. Uh, did you hear the uh, the plan? Or at least your possible options? Uh, yeah, that's with the Kratoans to get a ship and get to some city that's two days walk from, I forget the name of the city, to try to get to the surface. Well, Stool also wants to go home. I know. That was one of the options that was sending me off. Yeah. Um, how far is it to go to Stool's home? Mm. I've personally never made the trip from this side of the lake, but it is far. We'd have to essentially go to the easiest port to land at would be Crackstool. What? Crackstool. It's a Druga city. We could hit there, but then we would head north by about four or five days. And then we'd encounter the grove. Okay. So essentially he starts drawing out a map for you to kind of see and reference what he's meaning.
So, in order to get to the surface, we had had to head that direction. Mm hmm. In order to get to Stool's home, we have to head this direction. Yep. But can't we drop some uh, people off, then get back on the boat to head to here? Then drop Stool off, then head back. Can we do that? That's between you and Red Thor. Red? Mm. I'm fine with it. It'll be fun. Alright. And I guess it's decided. We'll drop people up, bring up, up to the surface, then we'll double back, add to this other port and drop off stool. Does that sound like a good plan to you, Sabbath? I am fine with what happened. Fair enough. Borak does not care. It's like. So long as I get to apply my trade. But I'm fine with that. Well, I bet there'll be plenty of gladiatorial events in probably one of those towns. Sounds good to me. So. Mm. Who knows, they might have a food eating contest. You're not wrong. <laughs> I wish I had a Okay. Alright, so... I'll just do it this way. You start to make your trip through the night. Or through the dark. Through darkness. Okay. Uh, you turned undead. <laughs> Who? No, I didn't. Just accidentally clicked it. Okay. I thought turn undead is literally turn undead dead. No, it makes him run away. Hmm. It's a uh, channel divinities ability. Mm. And I don't know why it did that when I clicked. I had to create it because apparently there isn't actually an ability called turn. I mean, there's an ability called it called turn undead, but apparently they don't have a dragon head icon for it. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I take it you're heading at a. Uh... Normal pace. Um, how many rations do y'all still have? Yeah, I got one day's ra two one day rations on me. Um, I'm going to have to retcon a little information. All right. Uh, so, Sloop to Whoop is the village that you're heading to. Mm -hmm. It's eight days. Ew. Yeah. 
Is there anything we can hunt in the Underdark? You can most certainly forage for mushrooms and other things like that. Would our mushroom friend have a problem with that? <laughs> I don't think he considers himself the exact same sentience as a... Uh, a mushroom. As one of those. Would he be able to help us find edible mushroom? Uh, he really has no skills. Okay. So. You're... I'll say you can make a day's worth of travel before you need to camp. And so, how are you going to set up sleeping for the night? Mm, like in terms of guards, or? Mm hmm. Guess I'll, guess I'll take first watch. No, like, uh, or act up in four hours. Then Bora can look up whoever next. Okay. So you'll take first watch? Yep. Okay. Roll a perception for me. Yeah, this is going to go swell. You are tired from your uh, time spent r making your way here and making your way from the uh, from the your drow uh, escapades prison. from the prison. So, you unfortunately nod off during your watch. Right. That's great. My character slept sleeping on the job. It happens. What's the terrain like here? It's a cave. Oh, no. No, no, no. Did not want to do that. They got a cave troll. No, nothing like that. You're not strong enough for that. <laughs> no, it's a fucking joke. If I had Hex and my... 
Next play curse. So we might. Good. Be very doubtful though. Like very doubtful. Mm-hmm. Am I reading this correctly? Oh, only sh mm -hmm. only records which you own can be shared. How does that work? Only records that you own. I tried to shared. drag and drop the the dragon head in the chat, and it says only records which you own can be shared. Oh wow, I I don't know anything about that. Well, I drug it from the PHB. Hmm. Heh, <laughs> weird. God dang it, so many... There we go. Uh... Where is that encounter? I apologize for my slow pace. There we go. All right, Tristan, I want you to roll for me. Roll for you what? A d20. So weird. I can't drag and drop that. I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, we're not doing that. We're going to do a. There, it worked. Okay, that's how that works. And. Alright. You wake up on your. Uh... Oh no, what back ass shield sword. No, you uh at you hear this uh as you're sleeping, you actually uh encounter actually you won't even need the map, so I'll uh, close that window. <laughs> you lucked out, man. Uh So you encounter a, a, you wake up and someone's tapping you with a stick. <laughs> you look up and you see a couple of deep gnomes with some giant lizards with packs of supplies on their backs. Giant to the gnomes or giant to us? They're giants to you. No oh boy. They're like think of camels but they're lizards. Hmm. What do you do? So basically, Jawas found us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled for Jawas. <laughs> uh, I say... Why, hello there, I guess, Dark Gnomes? Deep Gnomes. Deep Gnomes? <laughs> they take severe offense at your mis miscalling them Dark Gnomes. Did you just assume our race? 
<laughs> They're social justice warrior deep gnomes. <laughs> yeah, God. <laughs> Demonetized. Bunk. They start speaking in what sounds like to you, uh, undercommon. And you're, but you cannot understand them. I kind of say in my mind, Stool, can you hear me? Stool's like, yes? Can you please translate what these two gnomes are saying? You watch Stool kind of waddle over and you see the gnomes kind of step back and they're just like, Uh, it looks like they don't want me in their head. Uh, Can you ask nicely? <laughs> <laughs> you know there are a couple of your party members that do speak under common. Uh, still, go wake up Hexor. Uh, I don't speak under common. All right, then. Borax speaks under common. I thought you did speak under common. Right. Common on the surface. Mm. <laughs> he, he's from the surface, man. All right, uh, go wake up uh, Borak, but try not to get... startle him. Yeah. He gets up in a rush and gores you to death. <laughs> He manages to wake up Borak. Ooh, that was loud. Sorry. Borak kind of scratches himself and he's like, What do you want, girl? Uh, I can't speak under comments, so... Mm. Oh. How did they get here? Uh, they just appeared. Like, poosh, out of air. And wake us up with people walking up on the camp. I kind of fell asleep. You need to do better, girl. The Underdark is not a safe place like the surface. Well, yeah, no duh. <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather be on the surface. He starts speaking over to them. It looks like they're willing to trade for food. That's all they have. They won't trade for everything, but still. They're willing to... They'll accept gold or something of replacement for some rations. They have some mushrooms and such. How many rations do they have? Uh, they have about... 20 rations available. And how many people are left in the group? So there's you, Red Thor, Borak, uh, Sharish, Serif, Eldeth, Bupido, And, uh, and so eight frog. people. There's eight people left with you, and you've been kind of just airing. Like everybody managed to scrounge at least like two days of rations coming back here, coming out. So you could forage for food. Eldith has explained that she is a ranger and she can find food. Uh. She's just not sure about what is edible and what isn't, but Sarath has been willing to help her distinguish what is and what isn't. Okay. And this will be under... I hear the commotion wake up and stumble over half awake. What the hell is going on? 
Oh, hey, that's a big lizard. Apparently, the girl fell asleep on watch. Thankfully, traitors walked up to us. Huh. Yeah, thankfully. Still, that's a big lizard. They use them as, um, what do y'all use up on the surface to transport goods again? Horses. Huh. Horses, pack mules, camels, whatever. Oxen. Oxen, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, they're not really yeah, they're not as smart as you, trust me. This is a weird world we live in. Ain't it? You don't know the half of it. Okay, so... David's rations are five solar pieces, so... He's... And there's 20 of them, right? Yep. So that'd be... They're willing to sell them for six. Yeah, that's about the average, so... Then you... You said they yeah, also have this mushrooms. This is their food. They're selling it to you. They're willing to sell it, but they're not going to sell it for at cost. And how much? There's no profit in that. And how much uh, shrooms they do have they have? They have 20 for sale. Hmm? And how many shrooms do they have? Uh, they have 20 ration packs worth of shrooms. <clears throat> There's psilocybin mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> they're edible. They may have some uh, adverse effects. Okay, so mm. why is some for six? Yeah, 120 gold or 120 silver. And so one gold or let's see, that's let's see, it's 10 silver per gold piece. That'd be 12, 12 gold. Mm-hmm. You said that rocket that I still have is worth 10? Right? Yes. It's t worth 10 gold. Alright. You can also try and haggle. Now we only have enough for two and a half days with all that rations. With eight of us. And remember, you can forge. Yep. And I grabbed that stone and two of my gold pieces. Okay. And I go, oh, we'll take your rations. The stone is worth, worth 10 gold pieces. Roll a... Persuasion. Persuasion? Mm-hmm. They don't believe it. <laughs> nah, the fuck they don't. They, they, they tell Borak that they... How, how sure are they that that's worth ten? You just pulled it out of your bra. <laughs> <laughs> I, I walk up and... I take the stone and I look it over and say, I was a, I, I knew Jimcraft on the surface. This, I would, in a shop, I would pay 10 gold for this and sell it for more. Roll of Persuasion. They'll give you. They'll say they say the gem's worth eight gold. At most. I pulled out two gold pieces and say, All right. "Look at the uh, leaves. Fine with you. Fine by me. <laughs> All right. 
go ahead and uh, subtract the uh, items from your inventory. And you now have an additional 20 days worth of rations. Mm -hmm. So you have enough for two more days and some change. Mm -hmm. Do these so elves, have... um hmm? maybe have uh, a map for sale? Or uh, could they share us some information on what we yeah. uh, might encounter here. They say there's lots of abandoned places hidden around. So you might just stumble into one. You're on the best path to wherever the hell you said you were going. <laughs> if you're heading to this dark lake, this is the best path to go. Uh, they say just beware of random monsters and such. You just notice that they are armed. Appreciate the information. Now, uh, did we get, uh, did we, can we tell what gender, is it a mixed gender party or is it all male, all female? Uh, one, one male, one female, deep no. So... The places that they said the abandoned places, would those be like places for shelter? Sometimes, sometimes they're inhabited by monsters. Then it just depends on what you, what path you take. You might not take the same path as them. Hmm. They really weren't heading towards the Dark Lake. They were heading towards more of the southern regions. All right. I guess we thank them for the information and. My thanks, good sir and good lady. I wish you, uh, good travel, safe travels, and, uh, good markets. They give you a bow, and they, uh, make their way away from you. Uh, you go back to sleep through the night. Uh, you wake up in the morning. Uh, subtract one ration from your total, so that puts you down at how many rations did you all have in total? Um, I had 10 on me. Okay. And that's if you want to share them. You can just use the 24 your party for the additional party members. I have... Dalt sure. Borak has, has uh, 10 days worth of rations. Mm-hmm. So if you just use those 20 for the, the people along with you, mm -hmm. that that reduces your strain on supplies for the additional people four more days. And you can just eat off your own supplies. Right. That might be so, best for now and as it gets further along. Yeah, because you still have seven more days to travel. So there's eight of us total. It's fun. Okay, so they have enough. They would have enough food for four days. That's halfway there. And okay. plus, we also have the ranger to scrounge. So that mm -hmm. might extend us out a little bit more. We'll have our scrounge day in the day. Ask me. Okay. Alright, um. Now, does that reset my spell count? Yeah, no, your spells have been reset. We're now level 2, correct? Mm hmm. Yep. Alright. I need to 
character sheet to reflect that, so I have extra spell slot. Um, so on the main page, character uh -huh. sheet, uh -huh. click the little magnifying glass where it says your class. Yep. So it brings up the class level thing, drag the dragon over where it says your class, and drop it. The dragon on the right. Yep. Uh, level 2 Warlock. And read what it says in the chat box, because it probably will... Uh, Eldritch Invocations. And you hit the what Eldritch you need to do. Invocations. Hmm. Yeah, he's pilking his Eldritch Invocations. Evocations. Let's so, take a look. While that's going on, uh, you gather up your supplies and you prepare to travel the next day. Alright. Okay. Um Borak, roll a D twenty for me. Sure. Just a D twenty? Mm-hmm. Okay. Alright. You have another uh Uneventful day of traveling. Uh, you sleep. It's uh, a very uneventful night tonight. Uh, you manage to, all of you make it through your watches just fine. Tristan may manages to stay awake now that he's had a full night's of rest previously. <laughs> and uh, you make camp and then gather all your stuff, and you are now day two, uh, two days down. Five to go. <clears throat> um, can if you mm -hmm. release the other NPC to me, I'll level them up. What of it? Nah, don't worry about them. The the drow. He doesn't have a level. Oh, okay. I didn't know if he had a. I thought maybe he had a character sheet. It, all he has is an NPC sheet. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, Red Thor. Yo. Roll a d20 for me. I don't know which one that is. Big one. Far the to big the left. One. Far left. More and more caves. God, you guys are lucky. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Another eventful day. Uh, so you've got four days left now. Supplies are supply. Supplies are dwindling. Supplies uh, for your party for your party members. Yeah, they have about one more day worth of food. 
And can we send the ranger out to see if she can find find some more mushroom? You most certainly. Okay. You're lagging. Yep. So. Okay. She managed to find some more mushrooms and such. Some edible moss. And she helps to split it out amongst your party members. Alright. So they have... Uh, they were fed for the day off of that. Um, I'm going to roll for your next day. Mm -hmm. Man, this storm is really messing up with my connection. Did y'all see that? Uh, I saw two. We're seeing shadow dice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I rolled for the four days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> I well, can go with those. One of the days what? was 18, the next day was 8, the next day was 3, and the last day was 14. Okay. Alright. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's. Alright, I can do that. I can most certainly do that because it's uh, actually right or wrong what I got. Uh,. <laughs> That's actually a really good way to do that. I'll probably do that from now on. I just uh, rolled a 43 for the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you managed to find a boneyard as you're walking away, or wa making your way along the trail. Like a ancient battlefield site or just where people dump off bodies it, 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 it's just a bunch of bones piled up all in this little like, cave cropping that you found and as you are would you like to know the history of these bones yes Okay. <laughs> uh, as Borax picking through the bones, he's he starts to think about, huh? There's little looks like some little gnawing marks on these things. Like something's been nibbling on these. Uh oh. This looks like a feeding pit area. Hey, what now? Um, might we might want to go another way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We... And as uh, he starts to think about that, he uh, unfortunately encounters. Uh, there we go. Combat. Uh, God dang it. God, I'm lagging up really bad right now. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay. combat
Okay, and... Let's see... Here, more combat-oriented people. You are ambushed by a group of fire beetles. Yeah, boy. Thankfully, though, a couple of your party members are going to assist you in this combat. Specifically, Sereth, Eldeth, and Prince Darendil is willing to, you know, help you out with this. Where are me and Borak in this? Or who's fighting them? Uh, roll for initiative. that same cave map that I already shared to y'all. Because you can all see that cave map, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just make sure. Sharing sheet. Okay. Wow, what the... Um, how do I change the token scales? I hold control and use the scroll wheel on him, I think. Thank you. It doesn't look like this map has a grid, which is probably why they're huge. Yep. So if you right click on the map, um, I think it's under paintbrush or something, you can add a grid to the map. Oh, there it goes. Set grid. That'll work. Yeah, it'll be fine. He'll have to blow us back up again. <laughs> So if I'd left the bones be, would we not be in this encounter? Nope. Is that a nope we wouldn't be, or a nope we would be? Nope you would be. I'll be right back. We're going to go take a piss. Mm-hmm. I'm still setting up your encounter. Because, uh, of course I do not have a lot of these pre-planned. should be able to handle these guys. Especially with your uh, assistance that I'm tossing in with you.
and go ahead and roll your initiatives, guys. Didn't we already do that? Oh, you did. Never mind. That was mine. I need to roll initiative. Nope, I didn't want to do that. There we go. Wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, now they're all going to act on the same turn. So, oh, let me go. You can have. Uh, that's an op. Did they all just roll the same thing? Yeah, they all did. Oh, I was going to say, because there's an option in the game options uh, to have them randomize their. You can have them randomize their hit points, you can have them randomize their initiatives. Hmm. Okay. Uh, these things are really weak, by the way, so y'all should be fine. Should be fine. Okay, uh, starting off, uh, it was a tie for initiative between Eldith and Borak, and Eldith has the higher dexterity, so she's going to go first. Uh, she's going to... God dang it, man. Yeah, I'm going to have to probably get off here soon, because my internet is killing itself right now. Uh, she's right. going to take a shot at one of the beetles for a hit. And it is dead. And she's going to take another shot for a miss. Borak, it is your turn. <clears throat> I cast Sanctuary on myself, and I walk right into the middle of them. Okay. And cast Sanctuary is, is a bonus action, so... That work? Yeah. Yep, ten rounds, Sanctuary. Alright. Uh, let's see. Insert Kingdom Hearts song here. <laughs> I also cast Bless. Hashtag Bless. Up to three creatures with your choice. Great. So pretty much the Emperor protects, I'm guessing. Okay. All right, you all have bless. So now, and the way I read this spell mm -hmm. is either really overpowered or really underpowered. <laughs> it does add a d4 to anything that they choose. And it says until it ends. And so as mm -hmm. long as I sit here and concentrate for up to a minute... Yeah, they can do this up to a minute, like continuously. Yep. yep. All Ten right. rounds. <laughs> Bless is really good. Clerics are actually really awesome. And I, I like growl and snort in in a semi intimidating manner toward these four beetles. <laughs> okay. Hit me, well, hit maybe. Me. <laughs> Come on, it hit me. And uh, the first one's gonna take its. Uh, they're not very bright, so <laughs> it's gonna take the bait and try and hit you. <laughs> For a crit, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, but it's any time it attacks me, it's gotta make a wisdom save. Yeah, and it's Fair. not doing the wisdom save. Did sanctuary not actually apply? It should have. It did. Because uh, it has effect, maybe, maybe no a, sanctuary. Maybe a critical e just ignores it. Let me try again. Let me see. Any creature who, thro who targets the warded creature with an attack or a harmful spell must make a wisdom saving throw, and I think it's a 13. Let me try again. No, it's still not activating. But let me go ahead and roll the wisdom saving throw. Uh, 
Uh, it fails. So what happens is it if it a, fails? Is it an AoE that it's trying to use? No, it's just a melee bite. Okay, because I was going to say if it's an area of effect, it would still hit me. But uh, um, it says on a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. And you said they aren't very bright. So. <laughs> it, it just realizes it can't attack you, so no damage is done. I growl and snort at it more. Yeah. yeah, I'm lagging really bad. Um, my apologies. Uh, continuing on, it lost its attack. Good job. So, next fire beetle, real thinking, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I can do just as well. So it too is gonna come up there and try and bite on you. Munch, 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 munch. We look over For a the zero. Black and he's just got him. And it's just. just... No, I don't even... Yeah, you just watch as they're trying to, like, literally trying to bite onto this bubble of Borak, <laughs> and it's doing nothing. <laughs> nom, 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 right. nom, 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 nom. Alright, which fire beetle is it now? Alright, this one's also going to <laughs> have to make... And this one actually passes... I think on a pass, they get to try to hit... I mean, they get to attack. I'm not sure. Okay. It just says... It says every time they attack, they have to make a throw. Doesn't matter. You watch this is saying it... It, like, it gets the... It gets, like, a brain blast and realizes, wait, I can bite him. And it just kind of, like, bites onto your leg armor and just chink, 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 chink. Not really getting any purchase on your armor. Alright. Uh, next fire beetle is going to try to also move its way up. It's also very bright right now, so those of you without dark vision can see. Because these things are literally walking flashlights. Maybe we can keep one for a floodlight. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. You try. You very much try. Does anyone have a uh, that's a fail. So this one also just pauses mid-attack and just kind of sits there and contemplates its life, thinking about all the things it could have done better with <laughs> its uh, meager existence. All right. Uh, Fire Beetle number three is going to go up to Red Thor. It's going to make Ow. It. For a miss, you dodge out the way. Whew. All right. This Fire Beetle is going to go up on... Uh, Eldith for another miss. Y'all really didn't need party members. <laughs> What's the movement range? Yeah, they can easily make it. Cool. Alright, this one's gonna go up to Elise. For a miss. It clings off the shield. Yep. This one pushes its way past. And goes after Seraph. Another miss. This one goes to Darren Dill. For a natural fail. <laughs> so when it bites itself. <laughs> and it explodes in its own fiery fieriness. This one's gonna also go after Eldith. And it is they are flanking her. So. For still a miss. Jesus Christ. I'm not doing really good tonight. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh... 
when the DM has a bad a night of dice rolls, the party is happy. Oh, does is he not on here? I, I must have missed it. Oh, well, okay. it's done, but yeah, I thought I did that. Oh, I I I think I messed. I didn't hit the next next character. That's where I messed up. Okay, uh, it is Seraph's turn. He takes out his dagger or his uh, short sword and takes a swing at this beetle. Oh, cool! It actually adds it. Yep. For that's a, awesome. Uh, yeah, for a hit. I thought he was gonna have to roll it individually. Ah, uh, that's awesome. And uh, he's, you just watch this, and he pulls out a short sword and just stabs it right into this beetle, and you hear a little <laughs> sound as it, the fire within its body dies. I feel bad now. <laughs> At least it is your turn. Mm. You've got, you're traveling. It's, when you're traveling, Use all your spells because you're probably going to get some sleep the, <laughs> during the neck I guess after so. that encounter. I'm not just going to keep swarming encounters at you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a because a it just wouldn't be very nice, and B because it takes time and energy. <laughs> and it's dead. Or they don't have much else, do they? No, not at all. This would have been a great encounter to use armor of Agathys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! Dead. <laughs> Red Thor, it is your turn. <laughs> or arms of Hadar. Oh god! Oh, no, would have been no, would have been no, the, no, about no, the no. only encounter you could have used it in. <laughs> Was that the one that you literally turned everything in a fucking red mist? Into a fine red mist yeah and it didn't work the first time so i did it the second time then it turned it into a fine red <laughs> mist <laughs> um so yeah i'm gonna use my invocation okay agonizing blast okay how do i do that though so you're literally gonna make it suffer to death Agonizing Blast, I think, just lets you add your Charisma modifier to the damage. Yes. How Correct. do I make it do that? Yeah. So you still have to roll to hit. I can. I'll. I need to to get with War or with uh, Red Thor and look at his spells at some point because there's some uh, things that. Okay. So Warlock. your Elder's Blast hit, and then roll its damage. And uh, hopefully it added all your modifiers correctly. It won't it won't add it for Eldridge Blast. He's gotta go in and uh click the magnifying glass. Mm. And add uh where it says modifier. Mm hmm There should be a spot for under modifier. Click it until it goes to charisma. Uh where is the modifier? So let's No, nope, this let's could also work for a horde breaker as well. So, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. For cantrips. damage? Yeah. And it's, then, uh... Yeah, bonus it's... on that. Add a, uh... There should be a way bonus. to actually add... I'm trying to see if I can figure it out, because there should be a way... And it lets... Oh, so, plus. right now for damage, you have a dice, correct? Yes. And so where it says stat, you should just have a line, correct? Yes. Click stat um, until it switches to charisma. There charisma. you go. There you go. Done. And now roll that, uh, then put that damage dice on top of it because you hit. Nice, or juicy. Roll a... There you go. And it is dead. Good job, Red Thor. <laughs> Well, it's unconscious, not really dead. Yeah. It's dying. Uh, it, it's, it's dead. <laughs> uh, Prince is... 
So these invocations... You watch as he starts, hmm? Go on, Ed. Uh, like if it's for a cantrip, every I can time. keep using Agonizing every Blast time. every time. Yep. <clears throat> Agonizing Blast is probably one of the best spells that the Warlock gets. So... Also, since you're level 2, all of your spells now cast at level 2. Yep, because you don't cast, uh, or if he gets level 2 spells. He has yeah. to have level 2 spell slots. Well, even if, um, I believe at level 2, you get level 2 spell slot. Really? Yeah. I mean, if he every, does, he does. I believe, uh, well, let me, I'll double check, but I think, uh... No, first level. Really? At level yeah, 3, I do. Class it. All right, and that's one dead, and that ends his attack. He's gonna move up, and he, you like you see that he is snarling, and kind of like foaming at the mouth now. It seems like he very much is a quag off right now. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're right. It is still level two, level three. You'll get uh, second level All spell right. slot. Your turn. Eldith is going to take her Warhammer and take a swing. Swing, and she bad, 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 bad. swing it's bad, bad, really bad, bad. hard for y'all to not kill these things in one hit. Jesus. Especially with that plus yeah. 2d4. Alright, and it is dead. Oh gosh. And, no, I'm not going to allow her to do that, because no, y'all are going through these things way too quick. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's your turn. Um, I, Did I take any damaging spells? No. Uh, you, I oh, have Sacred yeah, Flame. Can... Uh, no. Yeah, I have... No, that's a cantrip. Why is my list not showing? There. I don't know why... <laughs> The list, for some reason, my list is screwed up. When I switch it to combat, all of my spells... That's weird. Uh, nobody's taken any damage, have they? No. And you're in Sanctuary, so... You can't technically hit anything. I don't, yeah, I don't, well, I can, it would just end the Sanctuary spell. Mm-hmm. I'm going to. I'm gonna roll to intimidate to see if I can get him to all attack me again. Okay. I roar and snort, paw up the ground, and make myself look as threatening as possible. They believe that you are the highest threat. <laughs> Even though they can't touch you, they still think they should be biting you. For some strange reason. So, uh... He's your tank right now. <laughs> Fire Beetle is going to, uh... Roll another wisdom. It does realize it can attack you. Or a miss. <laughs> clink, 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 clink. It realizes it can't attack you. It really doesn't think it can attack you. <laughs> it, this too, also believes it cannot touch you. All right, last fire beetle. It's going to roll to hit Prince for a miss. And it is now Seraph's turn. So seeing you getting surrounded by all these things that for some reason just pause while biting you, he finds it quite weird. But he's going to take out his hand crossbow. He he's wouldn't know that I had sanctuary. <laughs> no, he just finds it very weird. He's just like, why, the, why, isn't, it, why isn't it attacking him? <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is a gladiator, and you've probably read his story. <laughs> so, that makes sense. Oh, I didn't uh, it is a story. Hit. I didn't know it said anything. 
Yeah, I, I, I didn't write a bunch of his story, but uh, it, there is a synopsis of his character. And it's dead. <laughs> it's dead, Jim. Elise, it is now your turn. Uh, Elise takes a five step up this way and chucks a javelin at the bug. For a hit. God, that is an awesome spell. <laughs> so broken. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> God, well, I should have rolled the maximum amount for this encounter for you guys, Jesus, because these things just don't do dick. It wouldn't uh, work against anything intelligent. Well, it would work maybe for the first time, but anything with an actual good wisdom score. These things don't have a good wisdom. <laughs> I didn't figure they did. <laughs> so this is working really in your favor. Red Thor, it is your turn. Okay. I'm betting it's an Eldritch Blast. <laughs> so he rolls a four and still hits. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Fuck you, Bless. Fuck everything about you. <laughs> but what is the modifier on it, though? Unless I did something wrong, it's uh, Bless gives you a 2d4... You don't know it. Mm, but no, then I, I have something... a plus six. I th something is wrong. It should only be a 1d4. I don't know why it's giving them two. I don't know either. But. I'll take it. It says. Uh, whenever you target. Whenever a target makes an attack or a roll saving throw. Before the spell ends. The target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled. Oh, to the attack, I so. see why. Because there's two blesses on everybody. Oh, okay. That's why. Well, damn. I know what I'm doing. You're not Sanctuary, putting two bless. <laughs> Sanctuary and bless, bless. And there's my three spells. <laughs> oh, damn. Bless, bless. Hashtag blesses for all. And you get a bless. And you get a bless. <laughs> God, man. This is literally playing like what you do in real life. <laughs> Just thanks <laughs> for and blessing people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, me. It was too and, good to pass. And out. you get a bless. And you get a bless. <laughs> oh and you God. no, wait, you don't get a bless. You get a bless. And you <laughs> No bless for you. This is, I'm gonna have to remember that. that sanctuary and bless, the best things that you can do. Against really yeah. stupid enemies, yes. Yeah. Just and then just walk up there and like kind of be a choke point. <laughs> just be like What you gonna do? Nom 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 nom. <laughs> clank, 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 clank. I can't get uh, through this. <laughs> They also don't have a very good attack, so even when they yeah, do figure it out. The prince is moving up to, to try and help you wipe out some of these other ones. It, it, you look behind, uh, Borak looks behind him and he sees like this like snarling, menacing beast. The prince is a snarling, menacing beast? He's a quagoth. Oh, okay. He so, just believes. He oh, he said. wasn't down there at the bottom with us. I was gonna say, does he know what the Quagoth said when they walked when it walked away? Why did the Quagoth? Yeah, Thunder common, and he speaks Elvish. But he wasn't down there, so no. Why did the Quagoth walk across the road? To go and rip the person's face off. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I can't okay. let you be taking my jokes. <laughs> Why did Ellie's butler uh, cross the road? Slice off someone's head. Eldith feeling just like this is way too easy. Things like this usually don't go this easy. Takes a shot with her bow, a hit, and it's dead. 
It's dead, Jim. God. <laughs> I should have put more of these things in. Jesus. Or I shouldn't have given you the NPCs. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why it double blessed them. Because I only. Clicked... I don't know either. I must have accidentally double clicked. I scrolled up and I was looking. At... Yeah, there's. Is there anything you want to do on your turn? <laughs> is there only one left? <laughs> there is only one left. Well, I better actually be the threat that they thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> Borax smash! And... Swing and a miss. <laughs> nope. I haven't seen a swing yet. I, huh, that's weird. I rolled the... There it goes. There. Yep. <laughs> Instant death. He just cold eyes. I just I overhand and I just come down on top of the thing and you see molten bug guts fly backward and it just explodes and dies. Yep. And I I turn to the party and go, "Are you not entertained?" <laughs> Ellie. Oh, that's okay, so why yeah. didn't you hit, try to hit it at the park? That would have been more entertaining. Make, make also, it catch some air. Also, you you saw the sanctuary dispel in a wave of energy from me. It was it, it didn't hurt anybody, but you saw it go <laughs> away in, and when I smashed the bug. It was mm. quite spectacular. Exploding bug guts in the light show. Actually, let's see how spectacular you are it useful. was. Uh, Performance? It was it was somewhat spectacular. It was me. <laughs> Five out of ten. Would see again. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Prince Durandil. You just he's just like he's kind of snaps back. He's like, oh, oh. I kind of lost myself a minute there. Um, uh, not very gentlemanly behavior. I apologize. So, is this guy somewhat smarter than the average Quagoth, apparently? I don't know. Roll an insight. <laughs> I'm wondering the same. Should I roll an insight as well? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Because he seems, um, like, I'm wondering if he's actually a Quagoth. You're starting to think that you especially would know because you've spent time around him a lot longer than the other two. Mm -hmm. You would really know. Red Thor, you're kind of thinking, like, that's not a prince. <laughs> <laughs> Borax, like, I knew he wasn't a prince. <laughs> this is very much a Quagoth that thinks it's a prince. <laughs> You don't know if his insanity might be a liability, but he believes he is a prince, and right now he's helping you kill things. So. Hey, as long as this princeliness keeps him on our side, I'm fine with that. Exactly. I thought maybe it was uh, enchantment or something. But hey, if he does turn on us, <clears throat> I can hex him. And hex like curse him to death. You should have hexed one of these bugs and then just bounced it around the room. <laughs> yeah, but the uh, necrotic damage only happens when I hit them. Not yeah, when anyone else. Even, even if somebody else killed it, you could just still bounce the hex around. But it didn't matter anyway, because everything we touched died because they were low level. So Yeah. They're not low level, they were just low combat rating. I mean, of course they're low level. Okay. All right. And with that, you uh, don't find much other than blood guts or bug guts. And Do I find anything amongst the bones while I was searching? Uh, roll a survival check for me. Nope. <laughs> you find nothing. You find bones, and you give up after a while. 
Um, you do notice some of the, the liquid blood, uh, bug guts still glows on the ground. So it's kind of like bioluminescence. Were they hot? You said they were fire beetles. Were they actually hot? They were. They do no fire damage. They just, they call them fire beetles because of the uh, red illumination that comes out of their bodies. They don't shoot fire or anything like that. You didn't feel any heat when you hurt them, if that's what you mean. No. They don't explode or anything like that. It would make them a lot more dangerous if they did, though. That would actually be really cool. I'm going to have to remember that. What's that one? Is it the the hounds, the hellhounds that explode when they yes, die? Yes, hellhounds explode when they die. You should... I should know since... Uh, <laughs> explode yeah, I remember bloody. Jarek. <laughs> that and us fighting quasits. There's several things in my campaign that exploded when they died. <laughs> It's the greatest way to get party members to start moving. <laughs> move, 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 move. <laughs> or run, get... run, run! <laughs> or get... But, uh, yes. Um, the rest of the party walks up after you killed all these things, and, like, Jim Jar starts taking some of the... the glowing guts and, like, scraping it into, like, a vial. <clears throat> And he, like, hangs it to his belt, and now he has kind of, like, a little light. It's a, it's a medieval glow stick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> these, these are, like, they're, they're, like, dead fireflies. And you, when they splatter yeah, exactly. on your windshield, they leave a little bit of a... Exactly. Bioluminescence. But, with that, gentlemen, we will take a break. Or a uh, detour until next week. Because, unfortunately, my connection is really bad right now. Yep. And it's about midnight for some of you. Red, one thing it's you'll so want to check on...